CNN has announced the hiring of a GOP operative. In other words, a right wing hack who will not be a contributor, which is usually the direction that CNN goes in. No, no, no. This individual will actually be a political editor for the 2020 elections. Her name is Sarah Eisger, and I'm gonna tell you a little more about her. According to CNN, according to a CNN spokesperson, she actually recently worked as the Department of Justice's main spokesperson under then Attorney General Jeff Sessions. And she will coordinate the network's political coverage for the 2020 election cycle on TV and on CNN's website. So I just wanna really emphasize, in case it isn't already very clear, she is going to have editorial control over the news content on CNN, okay? She is a political hack. She has referred to CNN as the Clinton News Network in the past. She has worked for right wing organizations. She's worked for the RNC, she's worked for Ted Cruz, Carly Fiorita, Mitt Romney. Oh, isn't Mitt Romney running? Uh, in in an election, not this coming election, but isn't he planning to run again in the future? Well, he's a senator right now, and then he might run for president again because he's incorrigible, and certainly at a minimum will rerun for senator. Uh, so, anyway. uh, Ted Cruz is a senator, uh, and so I'm sure she'll be perfectly uh, fair in covering all this. Look, I, I'm going to jump in for a quick second. Mm, okay, uh, go okay. Ahead. all right. Now, Anna's go. She has no journalistic experience whatsoever. None. Zero. 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 She's never worked for a journalistic organization, not once in her life. Has no training or schooling in journalism whatsoever. Her entire career has been as a political hack, working for other political hacks, right wing hacks. And she is gonna have editorial control for what is gallivanting around town as a news organization. No, starting today, CNN is not a legitimate news organization. It is not credible. If these are the people that CNN hires, I'm sorry, you wanted to jump in, Jenk. I'm sorry for interrupting, okay? (laughs) Um, But yeah, you wanna be considered a journalistic news organization. You don't hire partisan hacks like this. And I would feel the exact same way if they had hired a Democrat who had absolutely no journalistic experience, but had a career being a, a, a democratic hack or a left wing hack, right? There are actual drain, trained journalists out there, but instead of hiring them, oh, let's go ahead and hire this rando, Sarah Eisger, who has no journalistic experience whatsoever. What is she gonna bring to the table? What does she bring to the table? Are you hoping that hiring some of you know Trump's cronies and some of these right wing hacks, maybe Trump will stop attacking you so much? CNN's pathetic, pathetic, pathetic. Oftentimes, Jenks the one who goes on these rants on the show, and I get a little uncomfortable. I got to be honest with you. But you know what? No more, no more getting uncomfortable. You're absolutely right. CNN is not legitimate at all, at all. I'm going to give you a couple sides here. Okay, so uh, we got a little fun role reversal here today. So um, on the one hand, uh, I'll answer Anna's question: uh, What's her role? Well, they're casting a soap opera. And she is playing one of the characters. So that's why I sometimes call the news anchors news actors. Because do you really believe that those are the most qualified journalists in America? Or do they look a certain way? Do they have a certain point of view and a certain perspective? And is it used to create drama on air and conflict on air? And so that we all live this American soap opera. So the soap operas have largely gone out of business because we just made them real life. And the top soap opera star is right now the president, Donald Trump. And so when covering him, CNN treats it like it, the soap opera that it is, and they cast a bunch of characters. So she's been cast for this role. The fact that she's not a journalist is irrelevant for that role, because they're casting. That's that's what it is. You want you want to play your little drama games. You want to play your little soap opera games. Go ahead and do so by hiring them as contributors. By the way, that was bad enough. I've railed against the fact that they keep hiring political hacks as contributors so they can have this giant panel of crazy people yelling and talking over one another. But it's a completely different thing to hire a right wing hack as a news editor, as a political editor for the upcoming 2020 elections. Has CNN not learned anything from their mistakes in the last election? I mean, again, pathetic, 
Pathetic, 100% do not trust CNN at all. You know, I, I was willing to, hey, you know, there are some shows, there are some breaking news stories that they managed to break that are credible and legitimate, and let's give them credit for that. But moving forward, I mean, the people who do the hiring at this news, organ, this news organization have completely tainted and destroyed the reputations of legitimate people that work on that network. If you're hiring nonsense people like this, no, Jane, come on, come on. Well, you know who it is. Come on, let's let's be real. It's Jeff Zucker. Yeah, Jeff Zucker. He, he sucks. He okay. sucks because you know what? When you're making these types of decisions, people like me who teach journalism students feel like they're selling snake oil to these kids, right? Because journalism has been destroyed by the likes of Jeff Zucker. When you're hiring people like Sarah Eisger, and by the way, again, this is not about political ideology. I would feel the same way if you had a, a, a complete left wing hack who has had no journalistic experience, no experience in the media to do the editorial component of this very important job. Okay, but let me give more context because I don't fully agree with that and I'll explain why. So to me, the, the problem isn't as much um, that she's a partisan. Um, unfortunately, that ship has sailed. Uh, cable news is littered with political partisans. And in fact, they literally won't hire you unless you are one to be a contributor or an analyst. I mean, look at the people on the Democratic side. They're all Democratic con uh, consultants and lobbyists and former politicians. Gee, I wonder why there's no progressives on air. Because progressives didn't have a history of being sellouts in Washington. Maybe progressives, and that's the only way you could get on cable news. Maybe progressives should just start calling the press enemy of the people and they'll start hiring progressives. Well, there's actually a little bit of truth to that. And we're not gonna do that because it's not the right thing to do. Of course. But but they are they do pander to the right wing because partly because they're intimidated by them. So now that's why I wanted to make a distinction between the right wing and the left wing here. So. I don't, and I, and I want to be clear too. I don't know if we agree or disagree with this, Anna, but I, it's to me the fact that she worked in politics is not as big of an issue. Um, so the, the she called it the Clinton News Network. I don't care. She, uh, they have all these things where she criticized Obama. I don't care. She's a Republican. Of course, that's what she's going to do, right? But there are a couple of things I do care about. Uh, she uh, said 92% of jobs lost in Obama's first term belong to women. That's an obvious, outrageous lie, <laughs> thing that isn't true. Perfect I don't CNN. know what her intent is there, but that's what, when Anna says hack, that is what she's referring to. People who purposely mislead you. I mean, who could, could possibly believe that it, in any economy, 92% of the jobs lost would be male or female? That's preposterous. It's a right wing talking point mythology that was put out there meant to deceive people, but that was her job. Her job was to try to deceive people on behalf of the Republican Party. And oh no, no, tax cuts for the rich will uh, help you. Now look, you wanna believe that ideology, that's one thing, right? But if you wanna make up facts about Obama's economy, Trump's economy, that's another thing, especially if you're going to work in news. And then there's the hilarious hypocrisy. She once tweeted, Obama administration is the new next Nixon administration when it comes to bullying, withholding info, and targeting enemies. How's that for funny? But when but she went to go work for Trump, who is the king of bullying, withholding information, and targeting enemies, and calling the press the enemy of the people. So I, I get it. They use uh, uh, these political figures as analysts and contributors. I think that's a terrible business model to begin with, because no American goes, gee, I wonder what a Democratic consultant thinks. Oh my God, Claire McCaskill, I respect her so much. What does that, you know, a politician who's been lying to us for decades and decades think about it? Oh, MSNBC hired her. Yes, now I'm going to watch them instead of CNN. And here I'm criticizing all of cable news. So Fox News does it with Dana Perino and Carl Rove, etc. And so does MSNBC with Republicans and Democrats, CNN with Republicans and Democrats, etc. They they never hire anyone for their expertise in news as much as they do for their so-called expertise in politics. But that's just a ruse to play this soap opera, okay? But I do wanna give credit to Brian Stelter <laughs> in a move that is unusual. He put out an article and a newsletter where he pointed out criticism, internal criticism of CNN while he works for CNN. So he pointed out that people were, one person said, quote, I'm really, really worried about this. 
Uh, another one said this feels this just feels like a disaster. Uh, another one was concerned that quote we hired a former Trump administration official to help guide our coverage. Good job, good job. <laughs> Great, so, great move by you guys. By the way, uh, one other thing that she did tweet about, uh, she minimized uh, climate change. Because you know, all of that scientific evidence doesn't mean anything. These are the same people who think climate change is our biggest national security threat. So no, that was one of her tweets. By the way, the people who think that climate change is our biggest national security threat is the Pentagon, the United States Department of Defense. So she, again, she should look into facts. But that goes to the, again, one last time, to the wrong standard that cable news has. Unfortunately, it's spilled over into other parts of the mainstream media as well. The right objective, the right standard for journalism is not neutrality, it's objectivity. And there's a giant difference. Objective is these are the facts, whether you like them or you don't like them. Neutral is I've twisted the facts to make them neutral to Republicans and Democrats so I don't offend anyone. So climate change is a perfect example. Now we've become we've come to accept, and CNN has come to accept. Well, hey, listen, that's the legitimate Republican point of view on that. So that's just their ideology and you can't criticize it. Wait, 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 wait. We have to we have to treat it as legitimate. But 99% of the world's scientists didn't make it up. In fact, if you think about it for a second and you think the scientists from India, China, US, Russia, Brazil, etc., all got together and decided to do a conspiracy and change the actual temperature recordings, etc., and decided to blame it on man-made things because they don't like fossil fuel or they're gonna get whatever. You have to be a lunatic to believe that. And so we have the press as unfortunately legitimized and normalized literally insane conspiracy theories. And so now they've hired someone and to be part of their political editing team. But again, I'm gonna give more context to be quote unquote fair because that's what we do. We are covering the facts here. The fact is she is not their only political editor. Oh, so, okay. okay, all right. All that right. makes me feel a lot better. Okay, what other hacks have they hired? Well. If this is their standard though, it does make you question. And so uh, there are other political editors there, she will be part of a team, but she does manage people. And I wanna give now to back to, the, to Anna's point and another really important part of this story. And look, again, it's the decisions made at the top. A lot of people at CNN disagree with this, okay? Uh, and, uh, but the devastating point made by one of them, again, why I'm giving credit to Stelter for covering it, is because he pointed out something I did not, I didn't think about in the beginning. They said, look, we have a lot of sources inside the White House. And the White House and the Trump administration were furious about those leaks. And they wanted to know their, those names. Now, she's our boss and we have to tell her the names. Yeah, great job. And do you really think a Trump official that worked for Jeff Sessions and is a, a deep right wing apparatchik, and I think that's a fair term in her case, never worked in journalism, she just worked for political purposes, etc. And she originally was against Trump, but she went and pledged her loyalty to Trump in order to get the job. Do you think she has enough journalistic credibility? She to has say none. <laughs> she has none. And just to your point about how CNN uh, mistakes uh, objectivity or neutrality with objectivity or objectivity with neutrality. No, they're not even neutral at this point, Jenk. This is a right wing news organization pretending like they're objective, period. They are hiring. I mean, you're right in that they never have true progressives on, you know, when they decide to fill their panel full of people who yell over one another. But more importantly, these are people behind the scenes. These are people who make editorial decisions about what gets covered, what doesn't get covered, how it gets covered. No, no, no. This is now a right wing organization. If you have editors who are GOP operatives and only GOP operatives, that's the only thing that they've done with their careers. Well, then this is a right wing organization. It's not a news organization, it's not credible. I certainly don't trust it. And moving forward, I am gonna be very skeptical of anything that comes out of CNN, period. I don't care if there are good people working there. I don't care if Brian Stelter did the right thing about talking about how some people are critical of it, okay? The fish rots from the head down. And okay, one last example to back up what Anna's saying. She spread out the doctored videos on Planned Parenthood. Now, if she spread that and they're edited doctored videos, she never even apologized for it. I mean, she's gonna be in charge of a, a big part of a big news organization. Not a news organization. And so can we trust that the videos coming out of CNN are not doctored for right wing purposes? Nope, we cannot, not a news organization. And super last thing. 
Can you imagine CNN hiring a, a left winger that had purposely spread false videos that were doctored in order to attack the right wing? They wouldn't come within a million miles of that. And, and they'd be so scared, and by the way, they shouldn't, okay? But on the right wing, it's accepted as, well, that's what that's, hey, that's, that's the right wing, that is what it is, okay? And they are legitimate, and they should be covering the news, like as if they care about the news, as if that's a priority for them, rather than propaganda. On the go, don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or at tyt.com slash podcast.